Okay, I got my hands cleaned up a little bit. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take right where we've got that split seal and I'm actually going to put just a dab of sealant on the edges. These um, bearings like this can have a tendency to seep past. So you do, I, I like a leak free motor. So you do whatever you can to try and eliminate the possibility of that happening. So, and then when you crank that down, you don't want to use too much because it'll get into the surface where the bearing is and actually keep the bearing from setting down in tight. Now, I'm going to drop the bolts in, in their respective locations. Get them started. Okay, and I'll drop each one of these bolts in and then we'll torque them down. Get all said and done with that and we'll be ready to drop pistons in. Yay! Okay, we got our bolts set in here. And uh, so now it's time to crank those down. We go over to our handy dandy uh, Chilton's book here. And we look for 400. And we look over under main bearing bolts. And it tells us to torque them down to 35 to 45 with a note on 11. And 11 says... 78 to 80, 95 to 105 pounds. So I have set my torque wrench here to 105 pounds and uh, we're going to get all of this torqued down. Now I always like to start on these middle, on the middle cap. I guess I really don't know why, it's just kind of like to start on there. I think you move out, you know, away from it, but just the way I do. So you snug that one. And you can snug this one. Just make sure you're taking them down even so you don't. And you take it to the click. Go back to this one. Now, every time you torque down a bearing, make sure that you can still roll freely. And it rolls, oh boy, that's just nice and smooth. So, we've done that middle one. Let's move to the outer, outside of that one anyways. Okay. Okay. Torque them down just like so. Double check again. Oh yeah, that's really nice and smooth feels good. That's probably not good for my torque wrench though. In fact, I know that's not good for my torque wrench. Anyways, um, something that a lot of people will like to do when they're building the motor, and, and I actually do use it, I use plastic gauge. And what it is, is it's a, kind of a waxy film stuff that you lay down in your bearings when you tighten them down. So then you crank down your bearings to the proper torque specs and then you uh, undo them and pull the plastic gauge out. And what that plastic gauge will tell you is how much gap you've got in between your bearing and your germ. It's, uh, it's really good stuff to use but I just happen to be out of it. I used my last, my last on the uh, on my last build, whatever build that happened to be, I think it might have been Charlie's 351, which is actually my 351 now. There are some things that I will overlook on this particular build because it's for myself. If I'm doing a customer build, I tend to be extremely picky. I, uh, and you know, I don't know, it must have been I wouldn't even venture to guess how many motors I've torn down, rebuilt, and worked on. I get pretty picky. Got a good record going. I don't want that to change. And uh, there, there's just some things a guy can do to limit, you know, risk and and such. And and so anything you can do to make sure that you never have to tear the motor apart again in your lifetime, anyways, you might as well do it. Just 
so happens, like I said, you know, in this particular case, I have no plastic gauge, so I'm not going to do that. Um, now I got all of the all five main caps torqued, so I finished on this one. Now I'm going to work my way back, and I'm going to double check the torque on each one. Check twice, fix once. It's it's just good practice to get into. Always double check yourself, no matter how good you are. No matter how many motors you've rebuilt, no matter how much of this you've done, always check twice. It's just good practice. There we go. So, the uh, main caps are torqued on. And uh, probably going to take two hands, but, but, uh, I'm going to assume that this rolls over. If it doesn't, <laughs> I'm going to have to pause the video and start from scratch again. Okay, um, I got it to roll over. I just, it's a little tight, but uh, as far as I'm concerned, it's always better just a touch too tight than a little too loose. So, there we go. That's, that's pretty decent. So, the next thing we're actually going to do here, just because it's uh, here and available, is install the timing chain set. Um, now I've got my, my marks already lined up on this, but uh, anyways, i got to take the bolt off. You line up that key, and you line up your notch there, so you got a dot here, you got a dot here. You line those up on your sprockets, and then you just slide it all together. And it should be fine. So we're going to get that put on, and then we'll be ready to drop pistons in.